Ha! Hey everyone, Hassan here. Welcome to the world of HA. Today I have a very special Power Rangers Beast Morphers review. And it's so big I can't even, uh, I have to like hold up my camera and, and move away from the table to really capture the size of this thing. This is the Beast X Ultra Zord. And this is the, the ultimate Beast X Ultra Zord. And that is because this is an Amazon exclusive version. So what the difference is, is it, this is the deluxe Zords. So we finally have Zords. Uh, they didn't release when the Beast Morphers toy line started, but finally, months later, we have Zords. And uh, the cool thing is you can buy each of these Zords individually, okay? Or if you go to Amazon, this set comes with all five Zords together in one package, the exact same thing, but you get a bonus. And the bonus is what you see right here, this sort of stand this platform, along with mini little rangers. So we'll, we'll take an up close look at those little figures, but I thought, you know what? I want the exclusive, right? So I would have bought all those words separately. So instead I just bought this one giant package that features everything. Um, it's huge. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but it's really cool. I love the artwork here. So you have really, really nice artwork of all of the Zords, which is great, all five Zords. Um, and you have this sort of open style packaging so you can peek inside. But uh, man, this packaging is actually really cool because like, <coughs> excuse me, if you look like back here, you can almost see like little pipes and things. So it really kind of looks like it's like a hanger for the Ultra Zord. So that's actually really neat how they how they did this thing. Um, so I actually I actually really appreciate that. And then on the side you have this awesome artwork of the five uh, Beast Morphers Rangers right there. So this is just a great way to uh, to display this thing to package this thing. Uh, on the top you have some artwork of the Beast X Ultra Zord right there, which is pretty great. Uh, flip it over to the side, and again, more artwork uh, of the Beast X Ultra Zord. So, to face their toughest challenges, the Power Rangers Beast Morphers combine every Zord to form the Ultra Zord. And uh, this is some great artwork. Epic, epic stuff. I love it. Let's flip it around to the back, and uh, here you go. There's a lot going on here. So, split Ultra Zord into individual Zords. So this is gonna have the Beast Raider, or Raider, Beast Racer converting Zord. So the Racer Zord. We have the Beast Wrecker converting Zord for the Gold Ranger. Uh, we have the Beast Jet converting Zord for Silver. Beast Wheeler converting Zord for Blue. And Beast Chopper converting Zord for yellow, and together they form the Ultra Zord. Now, the cool thing is, obviously, each of them can transform on their own, right? So there, there's cool stuff that you can do just individually. You can also combine red, blue, and yellow for the Beast X Megazord, right? Gold and silver combine as well. Um, I'm gonna show you all of that, and then all five also combine to make the Ultra Zord. And then, of course, you do have the adjustable platform right here as the exclusive. So there's a lot going on here, so uh, you know what? Let's just get this thing open and take a look. All right, so I've gotten the stuff out of the packaging and I'm going through it, but I just wanted to show you the instructions here. This is huge, okay? Um, you have instructions on like the Ultra Zord and kind of breaking it up into individual pieces, instructions on each individual Zord, because each Zord on its own, obviously you can buy, um, because they, they transform each on their own between like sort of the the animal mode, so to speak, and then some other kind of mode, right? Then you flip it over, and you have like the other Megazord combinations. So you have the Beast Racer Jet Megazord with red and silver. Um, you have the Beast Striker Megazord, so gold and silver right there. Beast X Megazord, obviously uh, red, blue, and yellow. And then a little bit of stuff on the adjustable platform. Like, man, this is a... Uh... There is a lot to these instructions. Um, but also I wanted to highlight the box. Um, I know I kind of mentioned it before, but real quick, I'm not gonna go through and like take out all the ties and all the stuff, but look inside the box. You can really see how it's got like a little hanger display piece. So if you really wanna take the time to take all the stuff out there, it's gonna take a bit of effort, but you can save this as a nice display piece to have in the background behind your Beast X Ultra Zord, cause it's, it's pretty awesome. So really, really cool stuff. 
All right, let's take a look at the Zords. And finally, our first ever Hasbro Power Rangers Deluxe Zords. So this is super cool. Um, obviously, there's going to be some differences as we go through this to what you're used to. Um, definitely kind of a different feel and a different way of, of transforming these things. I mean, I'm, even just looking at the instructions alone that I was showing you, they're in color. Like, I could actually understand everything, which was amazing. You don't know how many times I struggled with the Bandai instructions. Maybe you do, because I'm sure a lot of people did. But uh, that's already a great improvement. Um, and these Zords are actually really, really cool. Some better than others, but overall, um, I do really like them. The one thing to keep in mind, because I know, obviously, it's so easy to jump on the Whoa, Hasbro's amazing, Bandai sucked train, right? But keep in mind... You know what, it was like $30, $40 or something, maybe 40 bucks, and you got a Megazord. These Zords are, I believe, about $25 to $30. Um, so, you have the, uh, the Yellow Ranger Zord right here, the Jack Rabbit. You have the Gorilla, and you have the Silver Ranger Zord, which is the Scarab. So, those three are um, like dual changers. So they have two different modes that they transform on individually. Those, I believe, are going to be around the $25-ish price range. Then you have the uh, Red Ranger's um, Cheetah, uh, the Racer Zord. And then you have the uh, the Gold Ranger's Wrecker Zord, the, the, the Mantis. So names aside, because obviously some of the namings, like especially in the Gold and Silvers, are not that accurate. Anyways, um, those are triple changers. And those are in the more like $30 price range. So you're getting into the territory of what you would almost pay for a whole Megazord for just one of these Zords on their own. So this package on Amazon, I forget the total price, but but I do know that if you add up the costs of all five of these and then add in like an extra five or ten dollars or something like that, you get the price of the Amazon set. So it's not cheap. So so I just do wanna I do wanna clarify that. If you're looking for these Zords and you wanna collect them all. It's going to add up in cost. However, I personally am willing to pay more for what we're getting. I think these are worth the extra price. And we're going to go through these one by one and show you exactly what you get for that price. So let's start in order. We're going to go with the three main uh, rangers first, the, the first three rangers. And we're going to kind of walk through these. Um, I'm going to hope that I remember. I tried transforming these off camera and, and going through the steps. So I hope that I remember um, as I go through it. I have the instructions open behind me, but they're huge. So hopefully I can pay attention to, to what's going on. So first up, we're going to go through each sword um, and, and transform it to its, its other mode. Uh, and so what we have is the... Red Ranger's Racer Zord. And this is the Racer Zord in Cheetah mode because obviously the Red Ranger has a Cheetah. Um, and it's kind of interesting. So um, there's the, the Cheetah head right there, as you can see. Um, this is supposed to be the tail. It, it kind of just like flops around a bit. It doesn't, it doesn't really stay in all that well, um, but it is, it's there. Uh, it's, a, it's a thing. So um, that is, you know, what it does. Um, as far as like articulation while it's in this mode, the legs don't really, like you can, you can kind of move these feet a little bit. It's not really meant for movement. It's more for as part of the transformation. These legs can move back a little bit, but there's no bending here or anything. It's just a one solid movement. So really like that's not, it's not really meant for movement. It's really this solid pose. Um, so the reason being is you, the, the amount of articulation and movement, um, they're trying to be able to fit in all these other modes into here to make it work. But overall, I mean, I still think it looks looks okay. It's pretty pretty decent. Um, this is uh, maybe my least favorite mode out of the three modes that this toy has, but it's still it's still not too bad. Um, so there's there's the cheetah. So we are going to transform this now to sort of just the the main racer zord uh, uh, out of the cheetah mode. Transform it into like that car basically. So. Uh, there's a couple things that we're going to do, and I'm trying to follow along here and, and make sure that I am, am following the instructions and not missing any any steps because, gosh, like I said, there's so much here. Um, so one of the things is we're going to take this and... Does it go like that? I think it goes in like that. Yeah, and then we fold this inwards, and it clicks in place. So it's going to be just like that. 
Okay. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna fold these back. Okay. This is going to, uh, which way does it go again? Yeah, this slides in like that, and then this folds in. Okay, so slide in there, just like that. Okay, we're gonna fold this back over like that, fold this back over like that. Okay, now on the side here, we're gonna fold this back over, and then fold this over as well. So obviously you see where we're going with this. And uh, then we're gonna take this piece off and this can just kinda plop down a little bit like that, okay? We're gonna actually open this up a little bit, give it enough space so that you can fit the cheetah head right back in the middle and it's gonna kinda just sit in there just like that and we're gonna close it back over it. Clicks very nicely into place. One of my fears, by the way, because Hasbro does Transformers toys, I've gotten a few Transformers over the years. I know that a lot of people love Transformers, and maybe I just suck at transforming them, but I always have such difficulty with stuff like this about fitting one piece in and it's just slightly off and it just, it gets me so frustrated. So that was one of my worries about Power Rangers is that I would be frustrated with the way that some of these transformations are. But surprisingly so far, everything actually fits in really easily and it, it, it's, it's a pretty um, simple way of transforming things. So um, it's actually not, not bad at all. So then this is actually going to just click in right there and just like that. And now we are left with, I believe that's it. This is it, this is the, the racer Zord right here. And this actually looks really cool. I like the design of this. Uh, just the aesthetic of the black with the red outlines, a little bit of gold up front. You can sort of see the, the front of the cheetah head sticking out right there. Um, but yeah, I like the design of this and I think it actually turned out real nicely. Uh, this is a cool little addition right in the back here. Um, it all fits in very nicely. And uh, yeah, it does roll around, you know? So I mean, this is super, super cool. This whole Transformer thing. Uh, Hasbro has the experience with their engineering and stuff, and so it does feel different uh, to an extent than transforming a Transformer. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it definitely works out real nicely. So, with uh, I'm, I'm gonna uh, hold on transforming this one further because I wanna get all of the Zords together in one shot so you can sort of see what they all look like together. So this this sword again, the red and gold, have an extra mode that they transform to. Their, um, I believe they call it their uh, battle mode. So we're gonna hold off on that and I'm gonna come back to this one. But we're gonna jump to the Blue Ranger Zord next. Okay. So, here we have the gorilla. So for the, the Blue Ranger, uh, he has the, um, gosh, there's so many names. I have to like pull it up on a, a wiki just to keep it all straight. Uh, so this is the Wheeler Zord, and this is the Wheeler Zord in gorilla mode right now. Um, so very interesting looking. I, I'm not a big fan of the way that this turned out. Um, like, look-wise, it's not bad, right? Like, it's, um, what is this tape that's, like, stuck to the side here? Um, the, uh, look-wise, it's not too bad, but it's just the way that it's designed, so it just kind of sits on this little peg right here so that you can sort of move it around a little, but it just, it makes it feel unsteady, and if I want to lift up the arms, it's very easy, um, and it's not doing it right now, but it's very easy for it to just pop off just the top like that, you know? So that kind of just gets a little annoying. I wish, um, and you know why? Because I am dumb and I could never transform it properly. So never mind. Um, I tried to do that before and it wasn't going in, but maybe I just didn't force it down enough. I thought that was really odd. I was like, that, that can't be it. Okay, well, I'm dumb. So there you go, problem solved. Uh, I actually like this better now. That was my main complaint, actually. I couldn't get the peg to go in properly Again, this is kind of a new style of, of transforming figure, so um, I just thought I was 
screwing it up or I don't know, but there you go. All right, so it fits in nicely. So never mind. Um, so you do have some movement with the arms right here. You can rotate as well. Um, so that's that's pretty nice. Um, this part gets in the way a little bit, but not too much. It's not it's not bad. It still sits above it enough that it's not gonna be a be a big issue. Um, you don't really have much leg movement. It's kind of like pretty in there, solid. So really, it's it's mostly the arms is are, are what's gonna be doing the the moving around here. But you can twist it around, so you do have kind of sideways twisting movement if uh, if you so choose. So. There's that. Um, so yeah, it looks kind of decent. I know that um, people have compared it to the Japanese version and so on, and there's there's people who have their pros and cons for each. I don't have the Japanese versions. I'm not comparing to the Japanese versions. This is truly, I'm going to Amazon and buying the toys myself, and this is what I get, and this is my thought. So I can't really compare or say how accurate or not it may be to any of the other releases in Japan or anything. Um, but to me, it looks fine. Uh, it, it works decent enough. So, all right. So we are now going to transform the, the Wheeler Zord from in gorilla mode to just the plain old, uh, Wheeler Zord here. So what we're going to do is I'm following along on the instructions. Okay. Um, cause there's, there's a few different steps here. So we're going to pop off the head and we're actually going to push this down. So the, the helmet kind of covers the eyes there. Okay, uh, then you're gonna pop off those two pieces on the top. We are going to then, I think fold this up. Okay, if I'm doing that correctly and following the steps, this is gonna pop out, this is gonna pop out as well. Um, then each of those pegs is also going to rotate in. With these, you have to be a little careful because they can twist around, um, right, as you turn things. So you want to make sure that it's nice and straight so that it fits in properly. So just keep that in mind. So if it's, if it's turned a little bit, it might not fit in. So you just have to straighten it and then push it in. Okay. Uh, so you have that there. Um, then what you're also going to do is, I believe, does this fold in? I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. Okay, so we're gonna pop this off. Now, struggling with taking it off. Oh, and that just fell off. Although I think this needs to come off. Yes, this does need to come off anyway. So let's take those off. And then this piece is a little hard. This is why I didn't think that it connected that well, because it's, it's pretty tight. Oh, there you go. And now I'm knocking stuff over. All right, so now that we have this, uh, and this is folded in, we're gonna fold that down, okay? And what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take these two pieces that we had here, and basically, we're gonna pull out the wheels in the back and connect them, okay? So it should look just like that. Now, what the instructions say at this point is to actually take this and you just put it in here to store. It doesn't stay. It literally, like it's flat. I'm not even tilting it. And it literally just slides right out because it's sloped in there. Like this is one of the frustrations I have in this mode because it like literally, like you kind of have to like stick it off to the side. Like it's, and if you move it any little bit, it's gonna fall out. So I wish there was a, some other mechanism, a little peg or something tiny to stick it in there and get it to stay. Um, these little pegs on the side just don't, like you can try and finagle something and get it to hang off that, but it's just, it's terribly designed. So that, that's one issue that I have with, with this piece kind of sliding in there. Okay, well let's move that to the side. Now we have these. Uh, arm pieces. So these actually are going to fold in. Um, so we'll do that. And then we're going to combine these two. So you see the H right there for the helicopter port. All right, we're going to bring this back. And with the H facing up and the where the, the fists were in here, going to click right in just like that. Okay. Then we're going to take this piece right here and 
this is gonna peg in right in the front, just like that. You can start to see we're sort of building this, this little truck right here, right? So we're gonna flip it over, and we're now gonna attach these wheels um, onto the sides here. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky, and what I will say is, um, what I found to work the best is on the top here, fold this in, okay? And now, give me a second, actually no, I take that back. Fold it out first, this is what I did last time. So you fold it outwards, and you attach the wheels like this, it just sorta, of, it's supposed to slide in, just like that, okay? So the, almost like the wheels are front forward, so I'll do the other one now too. Okay, it doesn't peg in, it just kinda slides right in. Now you're gonna slide this over, but when you slide it over, you wanna kinda lift it up a bit because this is going to cover that peg in the gold right there. And then you're gonna push it down until it clicks, just like that. So slide over and up and on top, there you go. Okay, so nice and tight right there. It works, works pretty well. Um, then, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this piece that was left over, and the side that has the two pegs sticking out, so this side doesn't, but this side does, uh, that is gonna go into the holes right there. So it just sorta pegs right in. Okay. And there, if this were to stay in there, all right, I'm just gonna move this away because it's annoying. We have the uh, the Wheeler Zord. This is the, the Beast Wheeler Zord. It's pretty cool. Um, I, I definitely do like it. Uh, I, blue is my favorite color, but I love a combination of blue and silver, so this certainly does look nice. Um, and yeah, definitely, you know, it does, does roll around, which is also pretty cool. Um, I just wish they would fix that issue with this. But, Here's the cool thing, there's another mode that you can do actually that uses the front piece. So, you can actually take this and slide it down, okay? Pull this peg out, if, if you can, there you go. And then, this can just click right in. And then you can Use it like this. So this is the other mode that the instructions show. So I tend to prefer this because then um, you don't have it flopping around on the back or you don't have this extra piece missing. So it, it, it just attaches right on and uh, it works. So there you have it. That is the Beast Wheeler Zord. So those are the two modes. If you were to buy this separately, those are the two modes that you could do. Gorilla to the Beast Wheeler Zord uh, and back. So um, just FYI on that. Uh, and then speaking of the, the dual converting Zords, we'll bring in the other one here, which is the Jackrabbit. So this is the Beast Chopper Zord in the Jackrabbit mode right now. Um, and so this is obviously the Yellow Rangers Zord. So there you have it. This one is probably a little bit more complicated to transform than others. I mean, it's not hard, it's just there's a couple of other little pieces that you just kind of have to remember, keep keep an eye on. Um, but uh, yeah, so obviously you can see one of the Megazord helmets is just used in the back there. I don't know, it does look a little odd, but it's it's not too bad. Uh, from the front especially, it looks it looks fine. So yeah, it's kind of a kind of a neat little thing. So this is the Jackrabbit. All right, and so, of course, this thing transforms as well, so let's transform it into the, the Chopper Zord here. So the way this is gonna work is we're gonna take this off, we're gonna pull the front piece out, and then we're gonna break these two pieces apart, okay? In the back piece, you're really kind of taking apart a lot of pieces to begin with. So you're gonna take off sort of this Megazord helmet, uh, flip it over and take off uh, this other red piece in the bottom, okay? Then what you're actually gonna do is you're gonna fold the two feet inwards, okay? 
Um, once you've done that, you're actually going to sort of slide this forward. Did I do that right? I think I did. Um, yeah, slide this forward until it clicks over here. So it was, it was like this. So you're going to slide this until it's on the other side. All right. Um, on this piece here, you're actually going to take the, the two legs and they move sideways like that. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to bring in just like this with uh, sort of the blasters like facing forward. And then with this piece, um, with sort of the, the black tip on the top and facing outwards, just like that. And you're going to attach it. But the, the important thing to note, because I did this at first, is I thought I would just attach it straight just like I had before. But instead, what you actually want to do is you want to attach it to the bottom pegs. And there's a reason for that. Um, and I'll show you that in a second. But it goes into the bottom pegs, so the top pegs stay open. Okay, so that's, that's important for this, for this thing to, uh, to work properly. So we're going to bring in um, the, uh, the jackrabbit head, but instead we're going to flip it over and uh, you actually see sort of this brown piece right here. And this is actually going to slide in just like that. Okay. We're going to take this top piece right here and this actually can just click right on. But what we're going to do, and this can rotate as much as you want, but we're going to fold these outwards so it's like a straight line, basically. And what I was saying before, so this is like, you know, a helicopter and it, it rotates around. If I were to have attached it like this, here's what would happen when I try and rotate. It gets stuck, right? Like it, you, can't, you can't really twist it around. So I was doing that and I was like, that's not right. And then I looked at the instructions again. I saw, oh yeah, I was doing it wrong and I had to go down here. So that's what you want to do so that you have that free range of motion. Um, but we're not quite done yet. Um, I actually missed uh, a step down here. So we're going to reattach um, this piece right here. And I think it can go just like this. Is that right or is it the other way? Maybe it's the other way. No, maybe I was doing it right. Yeah, I guess it's just like that. Okay, so it just sits in just like that. Uh, and then what you're going to do to this sort of Megazord helmet piece is you're going to fold this outwards, and this is going to attach in to the top, just like that. So the idea being, if you do this right, and these are spread outwards and these are straight, it's almost like, you know, alternating helicopter blades. These are a lot smaller, so it does look a little odd, but you know, it works, right? So there it is. This is your Beast Chopper Zord right here. Not bad, not bad. It's kind of interesting looking. So, uh, you know, if you're, if you like the design, if you like the jackrabbit into this, this chopper, pretty cool. But just like with the Wheeler's Ord, how you could uh, put the head um, of the gorilla like up in the front, you can do the same here by pulling this out, flipping it over, and boom. Now you got the jackrabbit head right there. So I prefer this way, actually. Uh, I mean, the brown is kind of neat. It makes it look more like a generic helicopter, but I like this, the jackrabbit face right here. It just adds a bit more personality, uh, just like with the Wheeler's Ord having the gorilla face in the front. So um, yeah, there you go. This is the Zord. And the cool thing about it too is you do have wheels down here. Um, so it does also move. So pretty cool. They did a nice job with, with engineering this. It's, it's pretty neat. All right, so those are the red, blue, and yellow Ranger Zords, but that's not all, right? We do have the gold and silver Rangers. So I'm going to bring in the gold Rangers Zord right here. So this is the Wrecker Zord, and this is the, the, the Mantis mode, which this is not a Mantis. I know it's, it's like a type of beetle, and I don't, I don't understand the naming. But it is what it is. That's the official name, so we're just gonna have to live with it and just deal with it, right? So this is just like the Red Ranger one, 
This is one of those uh, um, triple changers, basically. So uh, triple converting Zord. So it's three different modes. You have this Mantis mode. Um, you have just like the regular Wrecker Zord um, that we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna transform to. And then there's also a battle mode, which is kind of like a mini little Megazord. So we'll take a look at all of those things. Um, but this one's a pretty decent size as well. Um, so I do appreciate that. Uh, and it looks pretty nice though. I, I gotta say, like, I, I think it, it's got a really cool design. This front piece is, is pretty large and, um, yeah, I mean, overall, I mean, it looks, it looks like a, some kind of beetle here. So, um, I think they did a nice job at translating that into, into toy form, right? So definitely, definitely pretty cool. So for this sword here, um, the way that this is going to work is we're going to transform. This is a pretty simple transformation to go to the, uh, uh, the Wrecker Zord. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to fold this piece inward and fold it down. Okay. So that's how we're going to start. We're going to flip this over and take this off. Then we're going to pop off sort of this leg piece. It just sort of, you just rotate it, just pops right out just like that. Okay. Um, we are going to slide this forward and this forward, just like that. And then we're going to slide, this piece is actually going to pop open. There you go. And it slides open. Obviously you see now there's wheels. Same on the other side, just pops right open, just like that. Um, so we're already getting pretty far with this here. Then this piece is going to fold down, and same on this side, it's going to fold down just like that. Okay? Uh, now, what we're actually going to do is we're going to take these little pieces that were sort of bent a bit for the legs and just straighten them out, okay? And what you're going to do is you see this side has the blaster, right? So the blaster is facing this way, um, and then you want to make sure that you um, have this flipped over like this so that this peg is sticking upwards and the blade is like straight like this and curved upwards like that. So that is the, the way that you want it to look. And there's a hole right there that's gonna go into the peg just like that. So that way you have like the blaster here and then this basically is kind of like a little blaster as well and the blade sort of pointing in that direction. Um, okay. And on the other side as well, just like that. Uh, once you're done with this, you're going to bring this piece right back here and uh, rotate this around and attach right in front just like that. And you have here the Beast Wrecker Zord. There it is. Pretty cool. Um, again, I, I like the style of these Zords. Definitely really neat looking. So it's got mostly black, but you have some... Uh, gold, some blue and silver. Um, this is the Gold Ranger Zord, um, but uh, I mean, it could pass as a Black Ranger or something because uh, just the way it is. But I, I kind of like that. It gives it a sleek look to it. Um, but uh, yeah, pretty cool. I like the design. All these like little blasters here, this blade right here. And of course, this can sort of swing around as well. It's got the little um, hook, which is which is pretty neat. So um, add some, some playability there to, to what you can do. Pretty sweet. So that is the Beast Wrecker Zord. Um, so that then brings us to the, so this does have another mode, but I'm going to come back to it, like I said. Um, and that brings us to the Silver Ranger Zord last right here. Um, and that is going to be the, uh, the Scarab. So this is the Jet Zord in the scarab mode. Um, so I guess it's supposed to be a scarab beetle. Um, and obviously you can see sort of the, the beetle aesthetic right here. So really interesting looking design. Uh, the only thing that kind of just sticks out as odd to me is just using the the face of the Ultra Zord of that piece right there. It just kind of looks out of place, but um, I guess you have to, you got to put it somewhere. So overall though, um, it's still pretty cool looking. Definitely really interesting design. So this one also is a, um, a uh, pretty simple type of transformation here. And so the way that this is gonna work is you're gonna fold this little piece back, okay? And same here on the other side, all right? 
So once that's done, um, what you're going to do from the front here is you're going to fold the wings down so that they are actual wings now. You're going to take this giant, the giant pincers here, fold them back. Okay. And then uh, these pieces right here are going to just fold back just like that. Okay, and then, last but not least, you're going to pull this forward, and there you go. You now have the jet. This is the Beast Jet Zord. Um, again, this part just kind of looks a little odd, but overall, still pretty decent. Pretty pretty cool looking Zord right here, so you got a, a nice looking jet. And I like the color scheme as well, mostly silver, uh, but little bits of blue and gold, and uh, pretty pretty cool aesthetic. So... There is the Beast Jet Zord. All right, here they are. These are all of the Zords for Beast Morphers here, all five. So we have the, the Wheeler Zord, we have the Racer Zord, the Chopper Zord, uh, the Wrecker Zord, and the Jet Zord. So these five right here. Uh, a couple of little things that you can do. So one, um, you know, obviously you may have noticed the H on top of the Wheeler Zord. It's meant for uh, the Chopper Zord to land on and stuff. So um, you can just kind of, you know, if you want to display it and have the Chopper Zord uh, sitting on top of the Wheeler Zord, you totally can can do that. Uh, I don't believe, like, it doesn't necessarily, like, peg into place or anything, but, uh, I mean, it sits in there and it, you know, is decently steady. So, you know, you do have that. Uh, but one thing the instructions actually do show that I, I was not aware of, but this is kind of cool, is the Jet Zord can also go on top of um, the uh, the Wrecker Zord here. And so if you look at the bottom, you kind of have this little indent right here, and that's because this can actually sit on right here and slide in. And so if I actually do this, look, it doesn't come off um, unless I slide it forward or, or back out of it. So that's actually really cool. Um, I guess that's meant for that, but uh, so if you want the gold and silver ranger zords to be displayed together, to be transported, um, you know, if you do it hard enough, it slides right off. But um, but still, like, that's actually really cool. Uh, I did not know that was a thing, but, you know, if you want to, I guess that's how they launch the jet sword off into battle. Just goes onto here and then just flies right off and and goes after the enemies and stuff. So it's actually really cool. So if you if you need to save space, but you want to display the Zords uh, in this form, uh, there you go. The Red Ranger's kind of on his own, but you do have you know yellow on top of blue and silver on top of gold right here, and and uh, it's pretty cool. So that's a, a neat little thing that uh, that they did. So now let's get into the other modes for the red and gold uh, Zords. Their their battle modes. All right, we're going to start with the Red Ranger's Beast Racer Zord and transform into battle mode. Uh, the instructions have it going from battle mode to, like, this, this sort of Racer Zord uh, car mode here. And so I'm going to have to go backwards, so hopefully I don't miss something. Um, but uh, let's, let's go along and see, see how it goes. So the first step here is we want to take out the, uh, the cheetah head from inside. So let's kind of pop this open a little bit and... Uh, Slide this guy out. There we go. Okay. Uh, and then, while we're doing that, um, well, let's let's connect it back for now. So we're going to take out the, the piece right here, and this is going to slide off to one side, and flip open like that so it becomes a sword. Okay, so we'll move that to the side. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take this, this vehicle here, and sort of fold this bottom piece up like that. Then, we're gonna take the side pieces here, fold them down just like that. Just kinda have to pull off to the side a bit. There we go. And it folds down just like that. Okay, so this is what you are left with. Then, you want to take this top piece here and uh, open it up, fold it down to the sides. Okay. I'll try and show you like this so I can put it in front of the camera. There you go. Okay. Uh, then what you're going to do is uh, you're actually going to take this, 
piece at the top, slide it up, and then these two pieces slide in like that. Okay, so you have that part right there. Um, this is going to slide down, just like that. Slide down, all the way, like that. Rotate, rotate, just like that. Okay. Um, so now, we're mostly there, almost there. We are also going to take this piece right here, and it's going to sort of slide in and sit in like that. Okay. Then, I mean, that's pretty much it. So we're just going to um, take the sword here and slide it right in. And that's, as far as I can tell, I'm just double checking the instructions here to make sure. But uh, yeah, we're, we're set. This is it. So this is the uh, Beast Racer Zord in battle mode. So there you go. Um, the cool thing about this is the arms have a good bit of motion. Uh, so this whole piece can rotate. Uh, as you saw, the arms can go sideways. You can bend at the elbow here. Um, so, and it does also twist as well. So you can have a good range of posability, you know, especially with the sword here. So that actually is, is pretty great. Uh, the downside is the legs don't have that type of uh, flexibility. Uh, they can rotate, um, and technically they can kind of move forward and back a little bit. Uh, but there's no, there's no, um, you know, they, they, there's a bend at the knee, but because the leg pieces are, it's so long, it just, it makes it really difficult to like do any other kinds of crazy poses unless you're doing something super dramatic, you know what I mean? Um, the legs don't, uh, the one thing is that I think would have helped a little is that the legs could move apart, uh, which this whole piece doesn't. I mean, technically the bottom part does, but that just looks weird. So this piece does not go outwards. So that's kind of what will hinder it a little bit. The other thing that kind of annoys me a little bit in this mode is this headpiece here. So it's supposed to just slide in here and it, it doesn't like click into place. Um, once you put the top, like this bottom part, it just sort of, you just sort of push it in and it doesn't really, there you go. So it's not, there's, there's no click for the bottom. So if you just kind of knock it, then it just, you know, pops right out. So that that's a little frustrating. I wish it was sort of click into place, unless I'm doing something wrong, but I don't see, like, I mean, I'm pushing it in against it, and it's just not, I'm not seeing a click or anything. So I don't know, if I am doing something wrong, I don't know what I'm doing wrong um, to get that to be a, an issue. So um, that's just my experience here. As you can see, like, it looks like I'm doing what I'm supposed to, but... I don't know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm missing something, uh, which very well could be the case. So, I don't know, I don't, I don't think there's, there's much else here. So, keep that in mind. Um, that's, that's the one. Stay, come on. Stay in. There we go. I don't know. That's that's the one thing that I that I sort of experienced. But otherwise, it's still pretty good looking. Um, you know, the helmet looks looks pretty cool. I call it a helmet. It's not a helmet. It's a robot. But like the the face, the you know whatever it is, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah. So pretty pretty interesting style here for this sword. So that is the Beast Racer Zord in battle mode. So then the other one, uh, so, so you've seen all three modes for the Red Ranger Zord. It is sold separately if you are just interested in that. That's totally an option. Um, but there's also the Gold Ranger Zord, which is the other um, one with three different modes. So for the Gold Ranger here, um, it's a bit more involved of a uh, transformation, basically. And so, again, I'm going to try and attempt to decipher these instructions going backwards through this. It's going to be a, a little bit of a challenge, but we're going, to, we're going to try. So I'm going to take these pieces off, especially because the instructions actually show it going from battle mode to the, uh, the Mantis. Um, 
And so I'm already transformed into this version. So it's it's a little tricky here, but we're gonna we're gonna go through this and, and see what we can uh, what we can figure out here. So I'm gonna pop this piece off, and uh, this I believe is gonna fold open. Okay, so I think this is what we're gonna need here. Then what we are going to do is. I'm going to start to transform this back to the Mantis. I think that will be easier on us uh, in the long run. Oops, this popped off because I skipped a step. So let me put this back on because that's not supposed to happen. Okay, what I skipped is this is supposed to fold um, upwards so that it lets us fold it back just like that. Okay, and I'm going to fold this piece back just so I have it like that. All right, now that I've done this, uh, I'm actually going to um, split up these two pieces here. And we're gonna take a look at these leg pieces, which I'm going to split apart as well. And from here, um, what you actually do is the leg piece extends, but you have to hold down this, this button here and you hold it down and it extends open just like that, okay? So on this side, uh, the uh, and the reason is, so if I were to slide it down like this, um, it sort of has to, you see how it sort of pops outwards? So when you slide it in, you have to make sure that it's flat so that it clicks in, right? So you're gonna do that. Same with this side here, okay? Uh, the other thing that you're going to do is the uh, the leg piece here, this is going to fold forwards, okay, and make sure I can get in there, there you go. So you have the legs, where am I going, there we go, this way. So now I have the legs. Uh, as for the body itself, um, what you're going to do is this is going to fold open, okay, and where are we at? This is the top, right? Okay, so looking at it like this, we are going to um, fold this flat, slide this open, move this piece back, helmet goes up, um, and then um, what you actually do is this part folds upwards. I keep calling it the helmet, but you know what I mean, all right? And you're actually going to, before I, before I connect uh, this, this middle piece, let's actually um, get some of the legs connected in here. So, I believe it's just going to plug in right here. Am I doing that properly? I don't think I am. <laughs> actually, no, no, I am. I'm wrong. Okay, so that's right. You connect these leg pieces here. I told you, it's hard to go backwards with some of these instructions. So I'm just sort of skipping steps and just going from memory now. And then we're gonna connect the two pieces like so. All right, now we're getting somewhere. All right. Uh, and then from here, what you're actually going to do is you're gonna take this piece that we had, right? And we're actually going to um, bend it inwards just like this, and it's gonna slide in just like that. So you wanna make sure that when you do this, that these little pieces are up top. You don't wanna do it like this. You know, it's gotta be so that these little things are on the sides there, so that it just sort of slides right in all the way, so that this, if you lift up the top part here, can click right in. All right, and now what you're going to do is you're gonna take this and uh, attach it in like that, almost like these little blades. This is like the handle right here. And there you go, unless I miss something, I believe this is the final combined form of the Beast Wrecker Zord. So there you go. 
So once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. It's just, uh, you know, remembering how the formation of some of these pieces. But uh, really interesting design. Uh, I do like it. Uh, I mean, this almost kind of looks like a Megazord on its own. Because uh, you do have some, like, uh, gray here, which I guess would be, like, silverish maybe in the show. So kind of almost looks like this is the Gold and Silver Ranger Zord. But no, this is just the Gold Ranger Zord in battle mode here. Uh, and it looks really cool. I like the proportions of it all. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Cool um, design, paint scheme. Um, I like these, like, little blade arms. And then you have this sort of piece right here on this arm. Uh, it just sort of adds an interesting element to it. So I actually think that looks really cool. Uh, unlike the Red Ranger's Zord that had a good amount of arm articulation and stuff, this one can rotate up and down and move in and out. But that's it. Like, there's, there's no twisting, there's no bending at any elbows. It's just in and out and up and down, uh, which is kind of more in line with traditional sort of Megazord style things uh, that we've had in the past, but um, just keep that in mind. And with the legs, they kind of move out a little bit, just more like a little wobble, but they don't move forward or back and there's no knee movement or anything. So the legs don't really do much. Um, that's really the extent of what you're going to see. So if I bring in the Red Rangers, um, Beast Racer Zord in battle mode compared to the Beast Wrecker Zord in battle mode. You'll see them side by side right here. Uh, and both are pretty interesting. So these are your two triple changing um, Zord figures that they have released. And uh, they're, they're pretty cool. Pros and cons to both, as I said. You get a bit more articulation here, but I actually kind of like the design of this one a little better. But they're both still pretty great. So on their own, I think these are definitely worth the price tag uh, because you do have three different modes, uh, as I mentioned, and, and they're, they're pretty neat. The other Zords, um, maybe if they were a little cheaper, you know, like it, it's kind of okay, the, the price tag on those. Uh, but the real value is going to come from buying all of these and combining them to form Megazords. So I know this is a long video, but there's so much to show and we haven't even done Megazords yet. So that is the next step right now. So let's make some Megazords. All right, it's time for our first Megazord combination. And that is actually taking the Beast Racer Zord and the Beast Jet Zord, and you get to combine them to make the Beast Racer Jet Megazord. So just taking Beast and then Racer Jet Megazord. <laughs> very, very simple uh, naming style here. Uh, this is probably gonna be one of the easier Megazord transformations. So basically, we're gonna take out the sword here, and uh, part of the jet is gonna become uh, the left arm. So uh, we need to sort of uh, fold this left arm upwards just like that and then rotate it forward so that the tire part is right up top okay then what we're gonna do move that to the side is we're gonna take our um, uh, uh, beast jet zord right here and we're gonna take the back piece apart um, and take that off okay and uh, actually, let's, let's, let's do this part first. So what we're actually going to do is plug in the, uh, this little helmet piece so that actually, I think it was the same way that I just had it. Did I have it this way? I don't know. But basically, it needs to be like this way so that sort of the curves are also following that. Um, and then you're actually going to fold this upwards. And what you're going to do is on the back of the Beast Racer Zord here, there's this little piece right here. And with this upside down like that, with this piece sort of sticking down here, this is just going to slide in just like that. So it's sort of just a, a Basically, there's no other place to put this piece, so it just sticks out in the back. Uh, and it's kind of hidden from view a bit, but that's that's where that's going to go. Um, all right, then here on this side, we're basically going to take the sides of the jet apart. Okay, just like that. And what we're left with is, let's take the two pieces here. And we're going to combine them. Oops. So you're basically just kind of taking it apart taking out the middle piece and then putting it back together. All right, now once you've done that, we're going to take these front little pincers and sort of move them forward. 
just like that. And then we're going to take the wings of the jet and fold it upwards. Okay. Uh, now this is going to attach on to the to become the arm, and so in order for it to work, there's two sort of pegs here, and you need one of them to connect, and there's one hole right here. So this is where um, I couldn't tell just from looking at the instructions which one you use. I guess it doesn't really matter. I like to use the front one, uh, like like this, because then this peg is a little more hidden. Versus if I do it this way, you can kind of see this peg sticking out a little bit more. So I like to do this this front one here to connect to the arm. Uh, but I guess it probably doesn't matter either way. So you just sort of click it in and there you go. Um, so this thing is about to topple over because it's a little heavy on one side. So let's uh, before it does that, let's grab the other piece and it just basically holds it right uh, in this hand here. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Beast Racer Jet Megazord. Told you there's not much to this uh, this transformation here. Um, very straightforward. Essentially, it kind of took a lot of the, the jet piece here without the middle jet part and made this the arm. Um, and then this side here, it took the jet part and made it a blaster, basically. So it's kind of neat looking. Um, this is one of those like just random add-on type Megazords where it doesn't fully change the look of the Megazord. You're just kind of swapping arm pieces or things like that. So we've had that over the years. So, um, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting looking. It is what it is, right? So uh, there is the Beast Racer Jet Megazord. Uh, but now I think it's time for the, the main Megazord that we've seen, uh, and that is the, the Beast X Megazord. So let's do that. All right, so we have the uh, Beast Racer Zord for the Red Ranger right here, the Beast Wheeler Zord for the Blue Ranger, and the Beast Chopper Zord for the Yellow Ranger. Together, they form the Beast X Megazord. So let's get right to it. So we're going to take out the sword and put it to the side for now. Um, what we're actually going to do is we're going to uh, fold that part back, fold these off to the sides, okay? The arms are going to fold upwards there and rotate down like that. So basically we're, we're making room for, uh, for some arm attachments right there. So that's all for that one for now. Next, let's take our Beast Wheeler Zord here. We're gonna detach this piece and this bottom piece right here. Okay. And then we're also gonna detach uh, this piece like so. Okay. And what we're going to do is break that apart, fold this forward, fold this forward. Okay. And this piece here, we are going to break this apart and it's actually going to attach on. So we're gonna take these, these giant pieces here and you wanna make it so that the wheels are forward and this piece is in the back and on the top, okay? So this piece sticking out is on the, the back and the top, just like that. You're gonna take this one here and make sure that you have a piece where the silver and the silver are both on the same side and then this is sticking forward. So just like that, there you go, all right? And then we're gonna do the same on this side here. So right here, here, oh, just like that. And these are what are going to attach on. Actually, before you do that even, you gotta uh, fold this down and fold this down. All right. Now, this is gonna kinda click right in just like that and click right in just like that. So it sits in on top right there, okay? Uh, here, what we're going to do is we're actually going to take off the front piece, turn it around, and then attach it back. So it actually needs to be attached uh, the other way. Uh, this piece is going to fold forward. And then what we actually need to do really is uh, these pieces can come off pretty easily. Uh, but essentially, we just need to make sure that um, so they can come off on however you want to do it. But you want to fold it forward just like this and then... 
uh, rotate it so the tires are facing down just like that. Okay, so it may come off, that's fine. You can just reattach it, but essentially you want it to look like this. So the tires are facing forward like that. Okay, so this is gonna start to get kind of tall. So hopefully I'll fit it all on the camera frame here. Um, but what we're going to do is we're gonna actually detach that. And uh, this little piece that we built is gonna attach right in the front, just like that, okay? And this cheetah head, is gonna go on the side right up there, just clicks in. And from the jackrabbit, we're gonna take out the head and this is gonna plop in on the other side, just like that, okay? So we're still left with this piece, which we're gonna get to in a second, but we have the jackrabbit. So let's start to disassemble the jackrabbit into a bunch of individual components here. These side pieces are also gonna come off. And then this right here um, is also going to, oh, and that one flying. <laughs> um, that's gonna come apart and I forgot I also need to take this back piece off. Okay, so let's start with, with these pieces here. And so what you're actually going to do is you're going to bend this in like that and uh, um, fold this back a little bit, just, just like that, okay? So this is basically going to become the uh, the arm of the Megazord. And you'll, you'll understand that once you fold this bottom piece out and you see a fist. And so now you're starting to understand this is an arm piece right here, right? So same on this side. So um, let's fold out the fist just to help guide us so you know it's gonna be like this. And there can be a little bend right here at the elbow. So this can sort of um, fold a little bit, but this is, this is what we want it to look like, okay? Now that we have that, let's go back to our, our Megazord here, and we're gonna attach the arms, just like that, okay? Again, it's a little hard to see, so uh, I'm trying to, to do my best because this thing gets, gets pretty tall here. Uh, in fact, let me, Adjust my tripod here. We're, we're gonna adjust it live <laughs> uh, just to see what I can do to make this a bit a bit more steady. It's not really super even right now, my tripod, but you know what? That's fine. We're just gonna we're gonna we're gonna make it work. Okay. So we have a few pieces left over still, right? So with this piece, what we are going to do is fold it just like that. We're gonna take this piece here, and what you're going to notice is, um, we're gonna turn this upside down, but there are these little clips right here, and then they're gonna clip into those pieces, like so. So it's gonna look like that. We're gonna turn this around, and with the, the blue part is gonna to connect to the red, facing up like that, okay? just like that. So that's just sort of the back piece. Oh. The legs sometimes do come off, so you can just kind of reattach them on if that happens. All right, next, we have these two pieces here. And what you're basically gonna do is this is gonna go behind the helmet or the head or whatever. You can kind of lift up the head a little bit too, and then put that back there. Grab this piece, and then these pieces are actually gonna be folded upwards. So, let's do that, okay? So while it's held there, you're just gonna slide this on, and then sort of click the front and back into place uh, on top of the, the head. And it just slid right off, which can happen, so you just gotta, gotta mess with it to make sure you got it on, nice and snug. Maybe, let's see. Slide on, yeah, sorry, it's really hard with the camera in my face, so let me stand up on top of the camera, reattach that leg that's falling off. All right, okay, let's, let's try and, and do this again.
All right, there we go. Basically like that. Okay. It's not gonna be perfect and it's already kind of sliding off a bit, but whatever, it's, it's fine. Kind of, all right, it's bugging me. <laughs> Whatever, all right. Now it's getting worse. I say whatever and then it like, just continuously looks, looks worse. All right, let's do this again. Slide this up. You gotta get it nice and even is the trick here. Now, while it's there, slide it on and attach, okay. Now, with that being done, what we're going to do is we're gonna take this piece here, fold it in, and it's gonna attach on, just like that. We're gonna take our sword, and uh, we have those two yellow pieces on the side here. So these, click right in, just like that. And just like that. And there you have the Beast X Megazord right here, finally all combined. It's kind of interesting looking. I, you know, I don't know how I feel about it. I like the overall idea behind it, the design. Um, the red, blue, yellow colors are really cool. Right, and I like just how uh, how it looks together. It's the toy's a little off for me. Um, the helmet piece, how like I was showing, it's a little funky. With it doesn't, it's hard to get it to properly line up. And then also the legs do tend to come off pretty easily, just like that, right? So if you're kind of playing with it, it's very easy for the legs to just pop right off, which is a little um, challenging, right? Because I'm used to just the basic Megazords being a bit more sturdy. I can understand an Ultra Zord, but the basic Megazords I'm used to a bit more sturdiness. But overall, it's still kind of cool. I do like that he has this little sword, and then also this like side piece right here, which actually, I should say, it's actually not complete. Now it's complete. So you have this sort of sticking forward, basically. Um, so there you go. Now you have the true Beast X Megazord. And I think, you know, this part is actually pretty cool. You do have a decent bit of articulation, technically, because the arms rotate, right? You have rotation in the shoulders here. You do can technically bend the arms, like, flat. Um, so you do have some of that, that range of motion there. It does sometimes click into place, so it becomes a little harder, but it's possible, right? Um, and then, if I can reattach it here, um, the, uh, so then you do have some movement there, um, which does allow for you to, to kind of pose with the sword a little bit. So that's kind of nice. And because you can twist, you can kind of get cool little poses, like he's sort of got this blocked and ready to go, and then he's got the sword. So that's kind of neat. I, I do appreciate, you know, what you can, what you can do. Um, but the same issues with the legs with articulation that you had with the, the Beast Racer Zord in battle mode by itself. Um, there's not really much articulation. So, uh, you know, I guess it is what it is. But overall, not bad. Um, it definitely looks kind of cool to see it all together. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's a functional Megazord, right? So, it works. Definitely pretty interesting looking. So, that is the three Ranger Zords combined. But that's not all, right? We do have the Gold and Silver Ranger Zords that can combine. So, let's take a look at that. All right, so we have the Beast Wrecker Zord right here, and then the Beast Jet Zord, the Gold and Silver Ranger Zords. Together, they also form a Megazord. They form the Beast Striker Megazord, uh, which is interesting because they both, uh, the Gold and Silver Rangers have the, the Striker Morpher. So kind of keeping that Striker name consistent for these Rangers. Um, so this transformation is gonna be um, kind of similar to when we had the Beast Racer Zord in battle mode, and we combined it with the, uh, the Jet Zord to make the, uh, the Beast Racer Jet Megazord. Um, so many names to keep straight. But instead, we're using the Gold Ranger Zord here. So we got the Wrecker Zord instead. And so the way that this is going to work, essentially, is let's 
take out these these blades here. And these are actually going to uh, fold in just like that, okay? And they are just going to attach right on here, right onto the, the, the pegs down here. So fold this in, attach just like that. Um, that's really the main preparation you have for the Gold Ranger Zord. There's, there's nothing else to really do. The rest of it comes, comes from the Jet Zord. So we're going to take off this helmet piece. And this is actually going to attach right in the bottom here. Okay. Just sort of pegs right in the back. All right. Uh, what you're going to do is this piece is going to come off and then uh, just like you did for the 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 red and silver sword combination right so um, you're going to detach the two side pieces take these two put them together slide this forward okay slide the wings upwards um, and now this is going to attach on to the uh, the arms so what we're going to try and do though is have this attach on like so so basically you're going to fold these pegs upwards but instead of the peg sticking up here you see these clips here? This is actually uh, can clip onto the side. So I'm actually just going to pick the front clip. This just came off. Let's put it back. Um, come on now. Don't give me a hard time, please. This really doesn't like go in that far, so it easily can just kind of be knocked off, which is a little annoying. Um, but I'm just going to pick this little front clip, and it very easily just clips on just like uh, just like that. That's it. We're gonna take this piece right here and uh, very simply turn it around and just uh, ugh, that back piece is so annoying. If I can get my finger in there, let's see. That's the only tricky part. Come on now. There we go. Alright, so once you get the peg down, this just sort of plops right in, just like that. And with his other hand, he's going to hold the blaster. And let's try and plug this back piece in again. Stay, hopefully. And uh, that's it. Uh, so much easier transformation here. But that is the Beast Striker Megazord. There it is. Pretty cool looking. Uh, I like the design. I think it's it's uh, obviously got a lot of that gold and silver. Um, and uh, so it sort of fits the aesthetic of, of what, it's, what it's trying to be. The gold and silver rangers Megazord. Um, but I like sort of the blaster. You got the claw thing going on here like you got like a bunch of stuff going on and it looks really interesting so i like it it's a pretty neat megazord um just like before with the the gold ranger one you just you don't have that much articulation you can oh this came off um some of these pieces can easily pop off so it's a little tricky but you can move the arms up and down and then move them in and out and that's it right the legs don't really have much articulation but if you move them too much in it's going to be so front loaded it's going to fall so you kind of have to keep it apart a little bit so keep that in mind that is one of the the tricky little things but let's bring in the beast x megazord next to the beast striker megazord so you can see the two of them side by side and uh, the first immediate thing that you're going to notice, clearly, <laughs> is the height. Um, I feel like this looks more like a traditional Megazord that we've seen. 
This one looks so tall because of the Beast Racer Zord. Um, so it looks so different than what we've gotten before. Um, so that is a little odd. I, I think the Japanese version, from what I've seen in pictures, is shorter. Uh, it's not quite as tall. But again, I don't know for sure. I don't have the Japanese version to compare. Um, so that is kind of an interesting thing, that the two of them side by side, like, look so different, you know, in style. So, very, very interesting. But, of course, this package that we bought from Amazon, right, was the Beast X Ultra Zord package, because together they form the Beast X Ultra Zord. And that is our final transformation. So, let's get to it. All right, so it's time for the Beast X Ultra Zord, and uh, the instructions are a little tricky because uh, it's kind of going backwards again, but it also, it showed it like as all the pieces came out of the box, and then, I don't know, it's it's really tricky for this one. So we're just, we're, we're gonna we're gonna go for it. We're gonna try our best and see what we can do. So we're gonna build off of the foundation of the Beast X Megazord for this. So that means we need to break apart some of the pieces here of the, uh, the, the Beast Striker Megazord. So let's take off the jet piece here. We're gonna take off these the side pieces. Um, we're gonna take off sort of this this front section right here, right? So that's that's coming off. Um, and then oh this back piece, that's important. Um, we are going to detach this uh, this top part. Oh, that's right. So to detach this, the instructions would say you actually this blue thing does is like a button. You kind of hold it down, and then you can detach the top part. So keep that in mind. All right, and then for this part here, this can separate out, um, and then you can close that in just like that, and same on this side. All right. So, um, these pieces, uh, this can fold backwards and in like that, all right, so the leg pieces. Um, but otherwise, this should be kind of on track with where we need these pieces here, because they're gonna go on the bottom of the feet. So let's, Start with that. And so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take off these uh, back pieces here to make it a little bit easier. And let's all attach these first and then reattach it. Okay, just like that. And then, uh, oh, there we go. All right, so we have the two leg pieces there. Uh, the other thing that we're going to do while we're here is we're gonna detach the arms, okay? Those are coming off. We'll move them to the side. And uh, let's attach this. to where we need it. So it now becomes even taller, as you can see. So it's uh, got quite the height here. So what we're actually going to do, uh, and so this is where it gets a little bit different, is we have these two um, pieces that we usually have attached and put in as the arm. So instead, we're gonna separate them out, and uh, this is gonna be folded back, and we're gonna fold this inwards like that. Okay. So basically it's like they were connected here, except we're gonna keep them separated at this point. All right. And so these, um, and actually I should say um, this part here um, can be folded, folded inwards. Um, I don't think the instruction specifically has a good way to fold this back. I guess I'm just gonna kind of slide this back like that, I guess. 
All right, so this is where the instructions were a little tricky, but I don't think it necessarily specifically matters. So we were, again, we were we were here, right? We were looking at the two pieces. So I think what we're gonna do is actually swap them around because now on the other side, you see you have these fists right here, right? So those are actually going to attach in to what we have. All right, again, still trying to figure this out. So I'm looking at the box and trying to reconcile with the instructions. This part is a little hard to tell, but I think what you actually do is instead of having the wings here, you fold the wings back. And I'm just gonna put this piece in the front here because that gives you free access to be able to connect it. So otherwise you're not able to actually connect the uh, the arm, which is obviously the, the important piece, right? So um, I think that's the the missing piece that I that I had there. So, all right. So now that I got those pieces connected, so that step um, is now complete. So what we're actually going to do is we're also gonna swap the uh, head piece. So let's do that now, okay? So you still need the same back, but now you have this piece that we're gonna use. So this is just gonna slide right in. And of course the leg has to come off, so let me reconnect that, all right. And there we go. The headpiece has now been attached. All right, um, then what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna take off uh, the gorilla head from the front. And we have this piece right here from the Jet Zord. And so this is actually going to um, uh, be attached on to the top here. But before we do that, we're gonna attach also this piece from the chopper zord. So we just click it on here and we wanna fold this outwards a little bit. So it's kinda like that. And then that is supposed to attach right on, uh, but do keep in mind that uh, these bottom wing pieces should be up a little bit so that there is space for these to still be attached. Like so. All right, so we're on track with that. Uh, we have the jet piece right here, which is gonna go connect right there into that arm. We have the uh, sword piece with the, the yellow attachment still. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this up and take out this whole piece. We're gonna straighten it out Okay. And this is going to attach in to the top. Just like that. We're gonna take the, uh, the headpiece for the Beast X Megazord and it's gonna attach right in. Just like that. And the idea here is that this is gonna slide out. And now the other hand has something to hold. Okay, just like that. Okay, now the other thing that we're gonna do is let's take off this back piece because I think there's some adjustments that we need to do to this. So what you actually do is, um, so it was like this, but you're just gonna kinda lift out the legs a little bit and then put it back in the same spot in the back. All right, but now we still have some pieces left over, right? So we're gonna use these pieces now let me move the camera down. And there's a couple things that we're gonna have to do first. Uh, and that is put the, the head back inside. 
close it up. Um, I think we can probably close that. I don't know if we need the peg yet or not. Oops. So I'm gonna fold this up just to be safe. And this is gonna go down. All right, so this is where we're at. And right at the top, we're gonna add the Gorilla Head, okay? We have the uh, these pieces here, so we're gonna straighten them out and put away the fists. Okay. And what we're gonna do is connect these. Just like this. There we go. Okay. And I think this can kind of, we can sort of, are we going to bend downwards? No. All right. I guess we'll just leave it as is. Okay. So now we have this right here. And so what we're going to do now, move the camera back up, rotate this around. And uh, it's, there's that little clip in the back where this is going to, I'm gonna attempt to get it in there. And yeah, I did it. And with that, we finally, I believe, <laughs> if I did everything properly, have the Beast X Ultra Zord all completed. This is really cool. Um, I always like when when we're able to take all of the pieces of all the Zords for that season and put it all together into a giant Ultra Zord. You know, those are those combinations are always some of my favorite. And yes, that also means obviously they're ones that like you barely can move, right? Like this is not something that you can like play around with without pieces falling off. But that's what, to me, Ultra Zords, like, I don't know how you could ever make a combining one that's that secure with all these pieces to do that, right? Like, that's so hard to do. For me, I just like having something like this on display. I think it's really cool. And, you know, I should say, like, if I kind of gently move it around like this, it's not 100% falling apart, right? There may be little pieces here and there if I do it enough, but, like, that alone is better than some other Megazords we've gotten in the past. Um... But here it is. So I'm gonna pick up my camera and move it because I don't wanna move this thing around too much. So just to kind of get up close and show you sort of what we're looking at here. So this is, we it started with the structure of the Beast Racer Zord, right? You have some pieces of the, the, the Wheeler Zord and the Jet Zord there and the chopper in the middle. Uh, the attachments at the bottom are from the Wheeler Zord and um, the uh, Wrecker Zord down there as well, right? Um, you do have the Jet Zord right here. Uh, the back piece has got sort of the main body of the Wrecker Zord with the Chopper Zord uh, pieces attached onto the side. Uh, you have the giant sword, which is also made up of the piece of the Wrecker Zord with some other attachments on it as well. So um, they kind of utilized all the pieces. So this is supposed to be like this little staff that he's holding here, um, which looks really menacing. Uh, but it's cool. I think the Ultimate Ultra Zord combination sort of turned out really well. Whereas I think like the Beast X Megazord looked a little bit awkward with how tall it was. This thing, because of how many pieces it is and how bulky it is, I don't think the height makes it look awkward. Uh, the height just makes it look super big and massive and powerful. Um, and that's actually really cool looking, you know? So I, I dig that. I think that's actually really cool. Um, for comparison's sake, I actually have the Ultra Zord that they sell separately that's the electronic version. So this is the non-combinable, transformable version it's got electronics, lights, sounds, motion activated things. I did a review of this, so you can check that out. Um, so if you want something to play around with, I think this is a, a great option. But obviously you can see the difference, and the difference. there's a big difference in price too, right? Um, look at the detail here. 
compared to something like that. Look at the height, look at the complexity. Um, you know, like if you're paying for the Ultra Sword as a whole, you're gonna get something like this. But if you want truly all the individual pieces to combine together, you get something like that. And that's, that's pretty sweet. So I, I definitely do appreciate the, the size and scale of this whole thing. So, yeah, that's, that's the Beast X Ultra Sword. Now, I've gone this whole time, and I know this is a long video. Um, trust me, I'm exhausted. I've spent all night working on this review. But there is one piece that's very important to show, and that is the Amazon exclusive piece right here. You have the platform, right? Like, that's... That's an important part of this whole thing, uh, especially because uh, you can mess with the heights, right? So if I want the Rangers to be right next to the Beast X Ultra Sword, I can, right? Or if I want them to be, you know, down here, I can do that as well. So you have this adjustable platform, basically. So it's a nice little base here and it just kind of slides up and down. And you have the Rangers right here and I'll show you the Rangers. They actually can come off. And there's little pegs here because they have these little holes so they can sort of sit in there. So let's take a look at these little mini rangers up close. Here's the red ranger. They actually have a bit more paint than I was expecting for some of these mini little rangers. Uh, I mean, it's not great, but you know, it's still decent for these tiny little things. All right, my battery's low on the camera. Let me switch it out real quick. All right, new camera battery's in. So that's the, the Red Ranger. Here's the Yellow Ranger. Again, not too bad. You have the Blue Ranger right here. I do appreciate the little attention to detail of like, for example, the visor colors are accurate as well. So, that's pretty nice. Here's the Gold Ranger. And I like how they did use kind of like a shinier gold. And even when you look at the silver in a second, you'll see nice paint they use there. But yeah, not too bad. And here's the silver, which this one I actually think looks the best. The nice silver paint, but like look at the visor, the other blue they use there. Like that actually looks real nice. It's pretty sweet. And so yeah, there you have it. So um, it's a cool little thing. So if you want to have a nice display, I think this is actually really, really cool. Uh, again, if you're interested in this, all five of these Zords that I went through in great detail are sold separately. I've seen them at Target. They'll be available at a bunch of retailers. They're the exact same things that if you buy them separately, you get the exact same thing. Uh, the prices are going to be very similar if you total everything up. Um, the one difference is if instead of buying separately, you want to buy them all at once. A lot of money at once, but you can buy it all together. This is the Amazon exclusive. You cannot get this if you buy the Zords separately. So if you don't care about this mini little display, the mini rangers, Go ahead, buy the Zord separately. It's probably better budget-wise if you, you know, get one here and there and as you get money, right? And then you can start to slowly build the Ultra Zord, which is kind of fun. Or you buy it all at once and then get exhausted trying to do all of these transformations and everything all at once because it is a lot. This is five Zords. We made multiple Mega Zords and everything. Like, there's there's a lot in this package. I mean, you, you do get your money's worth. Um, I will say that. If you get the Amazon exclusive or if you buy all five swords, uh, you know, at once, like regardless, th there's a lot of value here. There's a lot that you can do with this. And I think it's it's really, really cool. This is the first Mega Zords that we've gotten from Hasbro, the new uh, um, holders of the toy license for Power Rangers. And I'm excited. I'm excited about the future of the Zord line because I think this is a really, really cool um, a toy that they release and, and I'm looking forward to seeing what else they come up with in the future. So if you lasted this long into the review, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of the Beast X Ultra Zord. Did you get any of the Zords? Are you planning to buy the whole set? What, what are you looking at for Beast Morphers? Um, and I also wonder, I haven't watched GoBusters, but like, what are they going to do next season? Like, 
are there more Zords coming? Or like, how? what What else are we going to get for, for next season if they continue, you know, the second season of Beast Morphers? I have no idea. So that's interesting. But anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this review. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, and I will see you later.